All right, it's uh, September 23rd, and we're back for part two of our discussion with gold medalists of 2022, Jamie Forrester and Nick Hudson. Thanks a lot, guys, uh, for, for taking the time. Appreciate it. And, you know, should add that, you know, you both have very young families and uh, you're tending to the kids. And so it's great that you're able to squeeze this in. We really appreciate it. Uh, all right. So the Glenn Fittick is coming up and you've got an invite. Uh, you're there. Um, are you crapping yourself or are you really looking forward to it? Nick, maybe start with you. I mean, I can't deny that there's like an element of that, right? But I'm trying to quiet those uh, negative voices, you know, and just focus on like, I'm really excited for it, you know, and just want to enjoy the experience. And Jamie, similar uh, sort of perspective on it? Um, not yet to your direct question. I may well be the night before. Um, but very focused right now. Um, you know, the pipes were good at, uh, at, at Inverness or, or Brimar the last time we played, but there were, there were a couple of things to deal with. So, you know, making sure the pipes are well set. I play sheepskin bags. So making sure that's, you know, um, disinfected, reseasoned, all the rest of it. Um, so fitting well in these post lockdown days. Um, but actually looking ahead to it, it reminds me a little bit of my first appearance in the gold medal where I had nothing to lose. So I just enjoyed it. Yeah, that sounds like a great perspective. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a lovely place to play as, as you both have seen. Um, so what kind of prep work are you doing, Jamie? Or are you planning, are you gonna be, you know, extra, extra work or just your, your normal routine moving towards the Glen I mean, it's a, it's a very focused set of tunes um, and actually a slightly easier ask on the memory than Nick and I have had for the past year, six, six P brooks of own choice and six much bigger reels. Um, and we've had eight P brooks in the, um, in the medal. Um, so, so I think right now it's kind of, I could, I could have kept playing all the way through, but I thought I've, I've had an intense August. I'm just going to take a break. Um, think of, you know, let the pipes chill out for a bit, let my hands chill out for a bit. Um, just kind of go back to basics a bit, make sure the tunes are in good nick. And, you know, hopefully the PBRUS are, are going well. <laughs> Recent results with the two of us suggest they should be, given that's the way we qualified. So it's kind of focus a bit on the light music um, and, and, and focus a bit on the pipes, get, get reads going, get backups going, make sure everything is, is, is ready in good nick, backups available if needs be. So it's just, you know, just a bit of sort of patient and gradual run in and then in a kind of a fortnight's time, we need to be you know, at standard and just hitting it hard and keeping keeping it consistent. Yeah, uh, and, and Nick, you're a, you're a full-time teacher of piping and a lot of people assume, oh, well, you're able to practice all the time and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, are you able to to keep the uh, the energy going to, you know, after a day of work to, to focus on your own stuff, getting ready for the Glenfiddich? Yeah, I mean, I get a lot of... Uh practice on green hills of Tyrol that way <laughs> um yeah i mean for me like it's it's a lot of sort of pretty standard practice sessions honestly like it's not like i'm doubling my time or something like that but swapping out a few tunes here or there to keep it fresh sometimes uh after playing the same tunes like kind of every day for all of august really intensely uh can kind of get a bit dull so swapping out a couple of things here or there but mainly uh yeah just kind of keeping it going like Jamie said as well, sometimes you're nursing along a read uh, or you're, you know, just trying to get some backups going as well. Um, and then playing more double MSRs because that's kind of new for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, looking ahead, I mean, the, the gold medal, you, I think Jamie, you, you mentioned, uh, you, know, you do put your name in the history books. Uh, it changes, uh, can change some piping careers for sure. Um, you know, how do you maybe start with Nick? How do you how do you think the gold medal might change things looking down the road? Well, I mean, I get to play in the class now, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, I mean, like I was saying earlier, I'm just still the same person I was like before I won, right? Um, I'm steadily getting worse unless I am keeping my foot on the gas with the practice and everything like that. But I think I still have a little gas in the tank, and uh, I feel like this. I don't know. Just feel very like inspired to. Uh, practice and improve myself and stuff like that um especially after covid like taking things a little less seriously which uh you know as much as no one would want covid to happen again uh like 
it was kind of nice to have this forced step away from the competition grind without any like fear of missing out of anything. So that was kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, looking for a positive, I guess. But uh, yeah, like I just feel excited about like kind of keeping things going and uh, always chasing those like incremental improvements as marginal as they may be. But I don't know about uh, any major life change from it, to be honest. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and Jamie, it's, uh, do, do you feel like you're going to have in the future, you know, have to play up to this, uh, that kind of standard and has, have the expectations gone up for you? Uh, or, or, you know, what do you, what do you think your future is going to be like in piping? Um, do have the expectations gone up? Pr probably. Um, I don't know. There's There's been a few people I've bumped into, so previous gold medalists who, um, who kind of, indicated that you know new competition starts here um but to be honest for me when i started playing the pipes if i even knew what a gold medal was it was a mass a massive bonus so anything from here on in is an even bigger bonus but day to day i'm still getting up changing nappies doing the school run trekking into work getting cross with people coming home and playing the pipes for fun if i can um and so to some extent it's the same thing just you know, keep keep enjoying playing the playing the pipes. You know, you'll do it well if that's the case. I guess for me, um, I've picked up fewer light music results in the past year or two than than I have in um, in P Rush. So it's put a bit of a spotlight on that. If I can do it in one discipline, why shouldn't I be able to do it in the other discipline? I'm an A grade player there as well, so that'll probably get a, put a bit of focus on there. Um, but that's that's kind of fine tuning, if you like, rather than wholesale change. Hmm. Yeah, and you've you've provided a lot of advice in these uh, these two parts already. But you know, what about parting advice for aspiring Peabrook players or, or pipers in general uh, looking towards uh, solo competition? Jamie, you know, any particular kind of uh, recommendations, advice that you you might give to you know uh, particularly younger pipers? Um, there's so much to to love about Peabrook, but a lot of it is quite hard to to kind of comprehend when you're starting to learn the art form. It's it's long, it can sound terrible if you, your instrument's not good. It's quite complex to understand the music. It doesn't fit well with staff notation, so you can't immediately detect a tune in it. Um, so it's not, it's not the easiest thing to pick up until you understand it a bit more. Um, but I, I think it probably comes down to two things for me. Um, the first being like there, there are movements that you can get right or wrong, better or worse. There are phrases that some are right, some are wrong. Um, but ultimately, this is a piece of music. Uh, and so look for the music in it. Uh, and typically, I find if, if you're struggling to pick out the music in it, go for a walk and sing it to yourself and try and find the music in it. That's, so that's, that's piece number one. Piece number two, there is no substitute for a fabulous sound. Um, and I've had great compliments over the years for, for my instrument, but it just makes playing for 15 minutes so much more fun if the whole thing sounds like an organ. Hmm. Good advice, yeah. Uh, and Nick, uh, you're around uh, giving advice and, and, uh, and teaching kids all, all, all day long. So, but any particular advice that you might give uh, you know, regarding P-Rook and, and uh, success uh, in a piping future? I mean, for me, the thing that like switched the light bulb on for it is just like having really good instruction that kind of inspired you to understand the music and uh, you know, it's easy enough to copy a recording, but it doesn't necessarily get you to understand like what you're trying to do and get those little details out of the tune. So just, you know, get the best instruction you can, I think is really helpful and try to do it regularly because it just helps like get you excited about it, get you excited about practicing. And then of course, like what Jamie said, like the instrument is so much more important for P-Rock than light music. Like if the bagpipe is stable for, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, um, you know, it doesn't sound great. Like that's so important to enjoying the tune. If the pipe's good, it's so fun to play. And I think this is something I'm, I'm probably gonna like, I'm definitely gonna misquote him, but like Livingston talked about on one of his P-Rock diary things, he talked about like how you take the P-Rock and you put it on other instruments. And there's been a lot of cool stuff that has been done with that. But it never quite sits as well as it does on the bagpipe. And then the opposite of that is, like, nothing showcases the bagpipe sound 
quite as much as I think a good pivo. So yeah, to me, like like echoing what Jamie said, like the the sound of your bags, like the pea broth, they're like linked. Um, they they kind of help showcase each other. Pea broth showcases the bagpipe, and the bagpipe is uh, really the best thing for delivering pea broth. Light music sounds great on the fiddle. Pea broth, there's a lot of good fiddle pea broths. I'm not knocking that, but just really sings on the bagpipe. Yeah, that's uh, that's so true, and that's uh, uh, really good apt uh, you know bill livingston's uh, comment about it very perceptive as usual well look uh, you know both of you uh, thank you very much once again and congratulations on your success and you know we look forward to hearing many many uh, great performances uh, from you both in the future uh, and best of luck at the glenfiddich coming up thanks again right. thank you thank you it's a pleasure thank you